Hey everybody, Bob Gnarly 69 here coming to you from out at the farm. Today we got a couple more shotguns we're going to shoot today. I've got a Mossberg 88 full length pump and I've got a Mossberg 930 semi-automatic. Um, the main reason I'm doing this is for this Mossberg 930. I uh, got this one the other day. <clears throat> I, uh, I like it. It fits me real good, and I think this is like one of the really nicest home defense guns, or possibly police uh, clearing gun, breaching gun, whatever you want to call it. This is really nice. It has a 18 and a half inch bore barrel. Uh, it has a um, compensator up here. Oh, what do you, what the hell do you call it? A flash suppressor, um, if you want to call it that. Uh, it is a heavy barrel. It does have an attachment on the front for a sling, as well as one back here in the back. It has a metal trigger group. Well, uh, yeah, that feels like it's probably aluminum alloy right there, but uh, it's a semi-automatic. It is tapped on top if you want to put a sight on it. But for a home defense weapon, I would I would prefer to stay with the the beaded side in the front. Um, I don't do real well with uh, like uh, the, the the red dots and um, what are those called? Ring ghost rings. I don't do real well with those. Open sights are not quite so bad, but I prefer a slick top beaded front. Why? When I bring that shotgun up to my face, the top of the stock goes right here. Boom, right, right under my cheekbone, right there. When I lay across it, it's always at the same spot all the time. And uh, so there's a very, very small amount of adjustment that I have to do after I bring the stock up to my cheek uh, with a beaded sight. If I got a ghost ring on it, I've got to look around a little bit. And if I've got uh, open sights on it, you still have to kind of find that, you know, the front sight. And if you, if you got optics on it, well, that speaks for itself. But as far as a home defense gun goes, this is pretty nice. This is pretty nice. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take the, the full-size Malksberg um, 88, and it's, I'm going to use double lock buckshot in it, just like I'm using the, in the semi-auto loader. And at, uh, right there where that shovel's at, I got it marked. That's 35 feet from there down to the paper target. So we're gonna shoot at the paper target and we're gonna compare the uh, long barrel with buckshot. We're gonna compare the uh, 930 with the buckshot. And uh, also I had a few of those little mini shells left the other day after doing the uh, review on the uh, uh, Remington TAC-14. And we're gonna see if the mini shell will cycle through a uh, semi-auto loader. I doubt it will, but hey, what the heck? Yes, we'll check it out, right? All right, bear with me, hang tight. Bob Gnarly, we're back out here at the farm. I'll be right with you. All right, <clears throat> we're, uh, we're gonna start with the 930. Uh, one thing I didn't show you is I really like about this. See the breach there? See how that is? I'm not real sure what the official name is for that, but I call it a DNA gathering device. All right, 530 on the paper. Or excuse me, 930. Hang on. All right. On the paper target. Double up buck shot. Safety's on the tie. Uh, so if you put a pistol grip on this particular one right here, It'd be kind of aggravating. Like the 88 has it down here on the bottom. But anyway, on the paper target. Huh. Not bad, it's pretty tight. Dumping it. Uh, 
Okay, it did rise on me really, really quick. Uh, I had a hard time keeping it down on the target those last two shots. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even think I came close to keeping it on the target. You see those spots right there? Right there. One right there. Yeah, I, uh, I was all over the place with those last two shots and it sure as heck wasn't on the paper now, was it? All right, let's get the... Uh, that's not bad though, that's still a pretty tight pattern. 18 and a half inch barrel from 35 feet. You know, those are the first two shots. The one I shot by itself and then the second one before I started shooting the top of the tree. Okay. This time we're gonna use the Mossberg 88. This has a 28 inch barrel with an improved cylinder. Choke, and uh, I've got loaded, I've got three buck shots in it. Um, I don't have the plug taken out of it because it's still duck season down here and uh, it's aggravating as hell to get that thing in and out. But uh, we'll shoot the paper with this, see what kind of pattern we'll get with this. Something tells me it's going to be a little bit tighter. Let's see. I haven't a clue if I'm in the frame or not yet, but here we go. Set the paper. Not a semi-automatic. <laughs> All right. Mossberg 88. Let's go down and see what kind of uh, what kind of pattern we got with that. As you can see. A lot tighter. <clears throat> All right, that particular time, I again, I aimed in the middle. And you see the big difference, huge difference between an 18 inch barrel and a 28 inch barrel. I put almost every single one of those buck shots in the same spot. Look at right there. Let me get you. I don't even see the paper. There it is. All right, there's the first shot. See how tight that is? There's the second shot. And of course, you can see over here where the wadding's hit and went through. A big difference. Uh, we're talking about the difference of about a 10 inch spread from the widest to the next widest over to about a four inch spread. Oh, so it's pretty obvious that the 28 inch barrel will you know, keep it tighter than 18 inch. But even with the 18 inch at 30 feet, you saw that it really didn't spread that much. You could pretty much keep all your pellets on target. All right, this time I've got, uh, I've got the uh, 930 loaded up with uh, two of the little Federal mini shells. They're one and three quarter inch longs. They have a one ounce foster slug. Uh, they're rated uh, on the box. It says 1,200 feet per second. Let's check it out. And we'll shoot the uh, and we'll shoot the, just the hanging targets over there. Uh, well, it did eject the uh, <clears throat> the mini slug. It ejected it, no problem whatsoever. But if you look up in there, you see it in there. It didn't feed it, but it did then. Smooth shooting little rounds. Didn't shake, didn't eject it. So, not what you want to use in your 913, those little mini slugs. Uh, now, okay for a single shot if you want to use one. Okay with a uh, pump, uh, you can with the Mossberg now. It, it won't fit on the 88, but uh, 
For the Mossberg, you can get this little rubber adapter that slides down in the bottom back here, okay? And um, it'll, uh, a little adapter to help you work with the little shorty shells. I've never used one. I've seen them used, and they seem to work okay. But um, other than that, all right, guys, that's all for today. We just come out and shoot a little bit. I've been deer hunting back off over today, and I was about to go home, and I thought, well, while you're here and you got both these shotguns here with you, do a little comparison on them. So it's quite obvious that a uh, shotgun with a 18 and a half inch barrel, we have patterns at 30 feet about this big around. And then I use my Mossberg 88 shotgun, same shotgun shells uh, at 30 feet. We have patterns like this. Okay, so it's pretty obvious which one to hold the pattern best. Of course, that was a no-brainer anyway. And for all of you subject matter experts out there, Jesus loves you. And so do I. All right, guys, that's it. Bob Gnarly 69 here coming to you from out at the farm. I love you. I mean it. God bless America. God bless Donald Trump. God bless the Second Amendment. Amendment. <laughs> Adios, mi amigos. Au revoir. Bye. Bob Gnarly 69 here. Coming to you. Right at the farm. Glad you could come and join me. Uh. All righty, guys. Take care of yourself. God bless you.